the white people who mean right and in heart want to do right. But there are so few. If 10,000 rattlesnakes was coming down that aisle now, and I had a door here I could shut, and in that 10,000, 1,000 meant right. 1,000 rattlesnakes didn't want to bite me. I knew they were good. Should I let all these rattlesnakes come down, hoping that that 1,000 get together and farm a shield? Or should I just close the door and stay safe? I think that, that you understand the Viet Cong are not all bad, but America's still dropping bombs. In Hiroshima, the Japan wasn't bad, but she still dropped the bomb. In Korea, they weren't bad, but they still dropped the bomb. So now I'm going to forget the 400 years of lynching and killing and raping and depriving my people of freedom, justice, equality, the first fire, last high, the lowest of low, last respected. And I'm going to look at two or three white people who are trying to do right and don't see the other million trying to kill me. <laughs> I'm not that big of a fool, and I'm not going to deny it. I believe everything. I'm just saying, I'm just, it, it makes sense to me. The first, from the first time I saw that clip, I was just like, it makes sense. It makes sense. So starting from the beginning when he was uh, talking about uh, a few white people who mean to do right. I think that's a good place to start. Then we can get through it. So, mm -hmm. because it's something, it's something that, um, I really first heard from you, and we we talked about this before, but you were one of the probably the first person I've heard talking about this, and you were breaking down um the 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 true relationship between white abolitionists and black people in America doing slavery. Mm -hmm. And and then from there I did my own reading and research and I found out that there was still a sense of superiority and inferiority between the the white abolitionists and the slaves. So even those white people, like he was talking about, white people who meaning to do right, even those who meaning to do right still have that superiority complex or that superiority idea over black people. So, yeah, they are nice white people. They might be liberal white people. They might not be the white people who are outright in your face racist, but that doesn't mean that they see you on an equal plane. So that don't mean they're going to really advocate and fight for you to have the equality that you look that black people really look for in america because black people be trying to get a lot from white people black people really be trying to get white people to accept them but we have a thing we have to really understand and uh, that's what he was getting at yeah you got a few white people who may either really be down with us or just make it look like they down with us but they're not really all the way down with us none of them are but it's still about us protecting ourselves and being smart and playing and, and really understanding racial politics like we're supposed to. Their job, white, white America's job is to get power and maintain power. Our job is to get from up under it by any means necessary. But one of those means is not begging for them to stop. And it's not trying to align ourselves with them. It's doing what we got to do to get from up under them. That's me. Well, yeah, I mean, I think one trying to merge with white people on a cultural level, because we got to remember, like, this is a, a culture thing, right? Like, yeah, you could you could bump into one or two, you know, good people in a culture full of full of deviance and miscreants. That doesn't mean like every every individual is affected by the culture they grew up in differently. Um, but we're still talking about a cultural struggle. Like this is a group thing. So um, I think one of the, the, the mistakes we make is, is, is trying to individualize. And this is something I've been saying for years. You can't individualize racism. You can't. It's, it's, a, it's a group thing. So you know, and 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 the games they play with trying to get us in, and it works. Individualist individualism works well in America for a lot of reasons. One of the primary reasons I think is because it allows people that are a part of the dominant society that have the power and the resources and all of that to not feel bad about being a part of their group by saying, "Well, me as an individual, I'm different," and even those that are in uh, you know culture groups that are less powerful that are in minority groups they can as well feel better by saying i'm different but mm -hmm. you know this idea that you know we can merge with them and everything could be cool well the native americans tried that it didn't work out they restructured their whole culture 
yeah. to try to be more appealing to white people and yeah. white people still did what they did um you know it was, it was it was it was black people at the trump rallies that hasn't really been reported on a lot but from some of the books i'm reading these were actually black trump supporters that was still getting attacked by white trump supporters mm -hmm. at the trump rallies so there's no evidence to suggest that merging with them would work so then you come to the point of his thing of saying well because you just always just push back right there's there are some good white people out there that's true but that has nothing to do with the price of tea in china that that means <laughs> like what does that have to do with anything we're talking about a group dynamic and you bringing up a few individuals right well one of the most powerful things you said all of us live but the individualization of racism we got to hit up on that we have to hit up on that because like you said that's one of our biggest issues and that's one of the fallacies that we take in our supposed uh portrayal of racial politics is trying to look for the individual cases of racism rather mm -hmm. than trying rather than trying trying to prove racism through individual cases rather than the whole Mm -hmm. because when you try to prove because we always talk we've talked about it for years of how and we've seen it in front of our face how racism has evolved over the years it's mm -hmm. not it went from being in your face to being covert and well malcolm x told us about this how because it was liberal then but you had such a barrage of conservatism conservative in your face racism that people wasn't really paying attention to the liberalism of it like they were supposed to so now here we are and the liberalism is in your face now and the conservatism is not in your face but the conservatism is still there that's what everybody is still focused on that's what everybody uh, is it's still the target for black people while aligning themselves with the liberal white races who taking every goddamn thing from us like we talked about last week with simone sanders and the other people uh literally putting their lives on the line mm -hmm. For white people who couldn't give two shits about them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's like, it's not like you were aligning yourself with John Brown, who proved that he was down. Mm -hmm. Like he proved that he was down by putting his life on the line. You you aligning with uh Bernie Sanders, who ain't did nothing tangible for us nothing tangible and like you said last week the the excuse of wish he he walked with dr king when he was a teen and had nothing to lose what did he do for us as a politician as a man with resources with things to lose john brown had things to lose his life and all that stuff he lost it for us what did bernie sanders or these other liberal white people that you all love what are they doing for us nothing tangible so get off the white tit. And there's been a lot of documentaries, a lot of groups, a lot of books written about uh, white people coming into black spaces under the guise of trying to um, show black people how to liberate themselves yep, and yep. taking the space over. I mean, we just saw that with the George Floyd movement, how that was co-opted. Yep, yep. Um, yep. by white liberals with the best of intentions and and even some even some of the white people that I've heard that are honest about it that was this documentary I was watching I think it was called saving the world but it, I forget exactly what it was called but there was a white dude in there and he said something that we've been saying for years he said why would I let somebody from another culture group come into my community and teach my children right and he was saying that as somebody that was involved in the process of going into other culture groups to teach <laughs> right their right because they get it because he get it but we're we are so stuck in this we are the world mark uh misconstrued martin luther king message stuff people forget people's people are stuck on especially like with the dr king messaging that they pepper us with every year because you know it's gonna come back up. We almost back close to February or something, whatever, whatever happened, they're gonna pepper us with the Dr. King stuff. People focus on the few words that he's that he spoke within this I have a dream speech. But then when you remind them that you remember he also said that he led us into a burning building. So when he says that, that negates all that I have a dream stuff. You do get that right. 
he said a, he had a lot of speeches. He had a lot, but people like to hone in on that those little pieces. Well, he talked about you know black people and white people and all races being together and not judging people by the content of their character. But he, like you said, he said a lot. But we just picking out stuff and mm -hmm. we just gonna throw out because I'd be like, well, I thought we were just saying Dr. King quotes because he also said he led his people into a burning building, which means he understood that the messaging that he was giving at one point. When he looked at the tangible results, this ain't it for my people because we're in the worst situation. I mean, we still and our situation has gotten even worse since then. I mean, he also said uh, the United States government has given my people a check that when we tried to cash came back marked insufficient funds. You know, mm. he said that too. So, but the, the, the thing we got to understand again is this is cultural, and like like you said. You know, you can go all the way back. Like, it, it, when you start talking about even liberalism, right, progressive whites, you start talking about the abolition movement, you start seeing there's a difference there. When you start looking at any, even the, the workers, the workers' unions movements that have both blacks and whites able to participate in, you know, the whites were oftentimes held in positions of leadership and the blacks oftentimes couldn't have those positions. So everywhere you look, you see where really it's a disagreement with how inferior are blacks actually. Right, 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 right. They shouldn't be slave slaves, but they should they should be under us. Right, so, so with that, you know, it just goes back to, and I say this all the time, look, it ain't that we saying that you can't, have your white friends and all of this other stuff. You can interact with whoever you want to interact with because that's the wonderful thing about people being individuals is you might find somebody what? of another race that's jiving, but you also need to understand that that individual is just that, and that's separate from this culture piece, this group collective piece that we're dealing with when right. it comes to racism. Right. And I'll say this and then shut up. If a white person is truly down for the cause, they should be down to be a foot soldier and do whatever we tell them we need done. Right, right, right. I mean, right. So, <laughs> so another one of my my one of my favorite parts, my most favorite part of what he was saying is the the rat the snake analogy. You got a thousand snakes coming at your heart, coming at your door. One hundred of those thousand. I might not be saying exactly right, but 100 of those thousand are non-poisonous and on your side, but the other 900 are against you. Should I let all thousand snakes in my house and try to sort it out and see who's who, or should I leave all of them out? Well, to me, the logical answer would be leave all them out. Leave them out. What? What? Why would I allow all of this into my space? And I know the I know 90% of this don't mess with me. I know that. And I'm gonna lie it all in my space just because a few of them rock with me. Nah, that's not that's not that's not it. And and it goes to, like you're saying, even within the organizational uh organizations and things that we have, solution to to a lot of things that we do. Stop just a lot, stop just allowing anybody into our organization, especially our community organizations that are designed to help black people stop allowing just any and everybody in stop accept accepting things from any and everybody stop just placing any and everybody into leadership positions there should be there should be some kind of uh i guess you can say i just use this for lack of a better word like rites of passage or something it should be earned you don't just like that's how Rachel Dolas all getting got into the NAACP, and then people made excuses. Well, well, you know, she took care of a couple black kids. She adopted some kids. She she helped some kids that that pulled at the heartstrings of some uh, some women that I had conversations with, black women. Well, she the excuse. Well, she helped some kids. She you looking at it from an individual level. Mm -hmm. Rachel Dolas all ain't shit. Rachel thought you had to do why you can't why if you was that concerned about black people, you could have just came in as a white person. You could have did more good as a white woman than you could as a, a, a black woman, if we're being totally honest. You 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 didn't have to put uh perpetrate yourself as a white as a black woman, but you did and you and you ran with it. And then when you got caught, the Trump call for her was well, you know, I helped a couple black kids. Yeah. Now you in you disingenuous than the motherfucker. Because if you wasn't, you would have showed up as a white woman. Because, I mean, and here's the thing, right? 
we don't need those thousand rattlesnakes to use his example coming to the door to try to build the shield to save us right we need those thousand rattlesnakes to talk to the other rattlesnakes to get them to to chill the fuck out right that's their job right why are y'all trying to bite me like we don't need a, a shield and and so you know to say it directly white people we don't need y'all coming into our organizations and teaching us and telling us and trying to show us what we need to do to properly assimilate into American culture. We need y'all in y'all communities talking to y'all people about how fucked up it is that they won't, they prevent us from getting resources for whatever reason. But at the same time, we as black people need to understand that as a group. That's their prerogative. Like if they if they don't have to give you resources, they don't. If, if they want to keep the resources, if they want to maintain the power structure and the power dynamic the way it is, that's because they have the power, that's what they can do. If you want it to be different, do something to be different. You Build your own power base. Well, well, that's the that, that's very powerful right there, and that's needed. What you just saying. I've said this before. Black people, stop going into white spaces and trying to force your change, the change that you think white people need to make in their spaces on them. Build your own space. Go into our own spaces. Take that energy, either create your own black space or go into another black space and help build those black spaces up. White people don't owe us that. They make them do it. And if they choose not to do it, you go going to cry discrimination. So what? They know they discriminate. They know that's why that's why after they do that, that's why they get them bullshit hour or day trainings. Think about it. Think about what's the what's the usual response from some discrimination. Oh, we're gonna go to training. Everybody knows it's bullshit, but they just do they have to do that for the PR, but they know they discriminate. They like discriminating. That's why they still doing it, and that's why they get that bullshit trainings to say, well, we learn more. And guess what? The discrimination doesn't stop. It just goes covert. Mm -hmm. That's when people talk about, well, they have microaggressions, duh, because they smart. Racism evolves. They're not going to just go. So you got someone who bold, who, who still OG, who's going to be in your face. But for, for the most part, it's going to be evolved. It's not. It's going to be more covert than overt. It's going to be more liberal. And it's something that you're going to part fully participate in, Stacey Abrams.